Hello there, my name is Natalia Materiev, aka Tuli, and I'm a former 3D artist who worked on Love Letter, My True Feelings with Dr. Apis. Uh, a lot has happened in the past six months, and I will try to summarize how I got into the project and what my role was and what I did and how it fell apart in a post-mortem section and what I'm hoping to do for the future. Strap in, folks, and I hope you enjoy the video. <laughs> Let's begin with how I got into Love Letter in the first place. For starters, I heard about Love Letter's development like many who did very early on, through Twitter, actually, among things. Around July 2020, the hashtag RipYandereDev was trending which exposed Alex Mahan's conversation between a young dev named Dr. Apis, where Mahan was trying to coerce Apis into halting production on his own game called Love Letter, which would have borrowed the same mechanics as Yandere Simulator. Not an incredibly unique concept, but an attempt that would have been interesting. I looked into Dr. Apis's channel, which had a now-deleted announcement video about the game, and had a link to a Discord channel for potential volunteers. I wanted to take a chance, since the pandemic had taken a toll on my job search market for 3D animation jobs and 3D art jobs in general, after graduating with a 3D animation degree. So I wanted to join the Discord channel. I was able to get in contact with Apis, presenting him my portfolio and resume, like any job application. And I got in. I was very happy and elated then, because I was able to join a team of other 3D artists who shared a genuine passion in making art for a product. All of the 3D artists who joined used Blender, and we were able to bounce off of some nice ideas. Interestingly enough, my responsibilities even shifted in a more prominent role. Now, initially when I volunteered, I was just supposed to animate, using the same rig and character that Mahad uses from the Unity Asset Store, but I found very, very big glaring problems. Problems that showed a huge halt in any potential progress. Straight up a practically unusable rig that had literally broken vertices and improperly named bones. In response, knowing that it was a big chance to take, I actually made a giant proposal to the team suggesting that we make our own model and rig from scratch using Blender and the AutoRig Pro add-on. Surprisingly enough, and with the full support of the 3D team, my proposal passed. In the description below, I will link my proposal document for your reference. My role there and then expanded into 3D quality control and 3D rigging for the main character. Sadly, though, by the time the character was fully rigged and modeled, the project was cancelled. In this portion of the video, I will detail a full post-mortem on the game. One section will first detail how it fell apart, and the next section will detail how it could have been saved as a project. One of the first reasons the project fell apart was because the mistakes of one fell on many. When it came to light that Apis had inappropriate conversations with a minor when he was 15, other people thought that volunteers condoned this, even though none of us had known that this had happened. Despite everything I and others tried to do in reassuring that our own development in the game had nothing to do with the past actions of Apis, there was no way to distance the project of one person from their past actions. The project was attached to one name and person, and not as a group, so the sins of one person instead reflected on the project itself. It also didn't help that Apis was acting on his own without prior consultation, where moderators tried really hard to help with social media, but the dev lead would make online remarks and actions previously unknown without those moderators' knowledge, which left a bad impression. It made it seem like the moderators were lying, when that's not what was happening. There was just... miscommunication. Another problem that destroyed the project was a lack of vetting. 
There were initially no background checks, which led to underage volunteers joining, which presented a danger in the threats of doxing. Unfortunately, predatory people also momentarily joined, which endangered everyone. There's nothing wrong with being a young developer trying to make a game in high school. The problem is when you have a high-profile project that puts kids in danger. Fun fact, I found out later on that I was the eldest in the entire team, being 26 years old at the time, surrounded by a mix of high schoolers and young college students. More pressure was put on me with this fact alone, because I had to act as the most responsible in that fact alone. The biggest problem, and the one that finally broke the camel's back, was growing doxing threats. Everyone was in danger, and unfortunately one moderator did get heavily doxed. Even though they tried everything in their power to isolate their private life from the online world, no project was worth risking the safety of people, and unfortunately everyone's personal and mental health had been affected. The project was then shut and closed. Now, there were ways to have saved the project if they had been acted upon quick enough. One was to act as a group. We should have worked on the project as a group, not on the behalf of one person. It could have been focused on the project instead of the internet drama of the individuals. And there could have been a limit on what people could have said. By working on a project as a group, one person would not define the actions of everyone in that group project alone. The project could have continued under its own merits. Plus, it would have alleviated stress because you, there would have been a trust in the mod team and there would have been a healthy amount of distance from the internet that could have kept it on track. Plus, it could have kept teammates grounded in healthy work environments um, by alleviating that stress by having it just be a project-based group and not based on, hey, this is a Dr. Apis piece of work instead of it. If it had just been a love letter group project, it could have worked. Also, the lead dev, I personally think, should not always be the ambassador for the whole group because there could be something that they say that could be wrong and isn't a reflection of everyone in the entire group. I know it's a bit contradictory because they're technically the lead, but everyone has their own biases and mistakes, and the mistakes of one person should not hold an entire project and everyone else into scrutiny. Plus, I genuinely think that we should have had more transparency. With that transparency, there could have been background checks. We could have focused on a more rigorous background check system that could have ensured everyone's safety, where everyone is judged by their talents as opposed to them chasing clout and fame, because that's actually a, a point of contention that was going on, where there were people who were joining in initially with the talent, but... They were just staying for the clout and fame instead of the project itself, instead of the productivity of the work alone. Plus the transparency itself, it could have ensured faith in the team and in the fans, because it could have ensured the safety of volunteers, which would in turn ensure trust from fans. Plus, having that transparency and ensuring that faith in the team and fans, when problems arise, there would be this talk with them, with the mods, that should have happened in an open way. There shouldn't have been a back door behind everyone's back in some capacity, where you would have had the lead dev do that and contradict what mods would have said. I also think that uh, another thing that could have saved the project was focus, where we honestly focused way too much on the clout and on the drama sites that were going on at the time. 
So much energy and time was allocated in focusing on the hate the dev team got. Barely any content was made when everyone was getting dox threats and potential death threats. Also, I genuinely do believe this, but I feel like you should not hire voice actors too early. Personally, I think you should have a build of the game's mechanics, even in very... Even if it's in a very early state, before you hire the actors, this helps lead a focus on the content of the game instead of the exposure of the game. You can have voice actors, but maybe once you've had at least just one build of the game. Plus, with focus, there could have been more content and less exposure, Taking the approach of No Man's Sky, where you would release small builds as they come, minimizing their time in engaging with online discourse. Behind the scenes when you had No Man's Sky, Al um, when the dev team got so much hate, they decided, hey, we're going to go into full lockdown and we're going to keep working on fixing the game. And it turns out that when they did that, the game turned out phenomenally and was able to deliver. And I truly believe that those points could have saved Love Letter, but unfortunately it was too late. The pain over how Love Letter ended still lingers, but I want to be able to move on and do better things. I don't want the failure of one project that brought so many people joy, but also sorrow, to be a defining measure of my life. Because I want to be able to look forward into the future and bring so many people happiness. Though I'm not Apis, I still feel like it is my responsibility as a volunteer and as a former team member of Love Letter to say that I'm very sorry I can't say sorry on behalf of Apis's actions, but I can at least try, because I still want to be able to try. In terms of the future, I have a couple of game projects in mind that I want to pitch to you guys. Though it's not Love Letter, I still want to be able to work on stuff. I still want to work on games, on something amazing that can enjoy, be enjoyed and be joyful or sorrowful, just an experience in of themselves. One game is called Legacy of the Shards, which is a colorful 3D platformer with momentum-based mechanics where you have to explore around an island and help your friends.
The other game is called Phantom, which is a point-and-click adventure paranormal mystery game where you solve the mysteries behind a ghost's death. Though I'd like to work on both projects at the same time, I feasibly can't. And that's where you come in. I would very much appreciate it if you could vote through the comments for which one you'd like to see, and please reach out if you'd like to volunteer in making such an awesome project. I hope to see amazing work coming up this year, and I hope everyone stays safe out there. Thank you.